Hey guys, in this week's video, we're gonna be showing you this dog crate that we built from scratch ourselves and show you why we think that most crates for cars are not exactly right. And it has to do with one thing really. Now, before we proceed with the actual video, I want to make it clear, this is not an instructional video. We have no idea what we're doing. We kind of put pieces of wood together and it turned out to be a crate. Uh, but aside from that, we don't know what we're doing at all. What we are trying to do is maybe inspire you to try it yourself, perhaps. It took us a long time to build this, well, almost a year, really, mainly because we lost the will to live halfway through this project. So this is our current setup that we have at the moment. Uh, we've got one of these cheap crates that you can find on Amazon. I think it was about 30 quid or so, and they're collapsible. So they're great for traveling uh, and they're quite light. As you can see, most of it is made out of fabric. The problem that we've had was when we measured the boot, we measured the distance from the end of the boot to the back of the seats. And now because the seats are sloped, the crate doesn't actually fit all the way to the back. Originally, what we were picturing is that we would have the crate like this. And as you can see, it looks like it just about fits, right? Um, this doesn't come past the lip here, so it looks all good. The problem that we have is because this is straight and the boot isn't this doesn't close so you're gonna ask why do we actually want it this way well this way you get a lot more room on the side and bella still gets the same room inside the crate whereas when we have it the normal way there's a bunch of room out here on the front that just gets wasted there's still a lot of wasted space at the back because there's a little triangle um, that is completely empty because of the way the seats actually are sloping now, one thing we realized once we built our other crate was that we could have made this work in the car and it would have taken three minutes. I don't want to think about that too much. What we could have done is cut down these poles because there's poles up here that keep the structure rigid. That would have meant that we'd be able to actually squeeze the, the top and it would have fit the back seats perfectly. Let me show you quickly. The frame can be released at the top with these quick release poles, then we could have trimmed this bit here so it's a little bit shorter, and then we'd have been able to push one side to fit the back seats, whilst the other side is still straight, and just tuck the excess material around the back or something like that. So that would have been a pretty simple solution. It still gets me angry thinking about it now. Hey, but I've made the new crate now, so we're gonna use it. And uh, here's how the new crate fixes a bunch of those problems. Now, before I show you the new crate, we need to go back in time to the beginning of the project and show you the steps that we took to build it. What you're gonna be seeing is a lot of shots of us a year ago, and then a lot sooner as well. So you might see fat Evan and Anna, that's from a year ago. And you might see slim Evan and Anna, that's recent. You'll be able to work it out, it's not hard, trust me. You wait until you see the shots. Right, well, so without further ado, let's uh, go back a year and see how we started. Well, like any exciting project, you start by buying things you don't know how to use, hoping they will help you. So I bought a workbench and a nail gun. We then had to buy the materials and after a little bit of research, we decided to get 6mm and 12mm MDF. And thankfully, the cutting service at B&Q was open, so they were able to cut it for us so we can fit it in the car. At least that was our intention. And as you're about to see, it didn't quite work out. Okay, so we go back to the car and we got all the pieces in the boot, except for this one and these two, there's two there. So we got one piece in there. The other ones don't fit, means we're gonna have to cut them down. Of course, it was the perfect opportunity to deploy my newly bought workbench and get my new jigsaw out for its first use.
Amazingly, I managed to cut the pieces down to the correct size and fit them at the back of the car. I think so far it's going well. We've done a few cuts uh, on our own without filming, just so we don't make fools of ourselves. And they've gone surprisingly well so far. Uh, we've, what have we got? We've got the bottom, we've got the back. Uh, is that all we've done? I think that's all we've done. Okay, so it was difficult, okay? It's difficult measuring and get things wrong. You know what it's like. Uh, let me show you the, our setup. We've got uh, a spreadsheet and I've done proper measurements of the sheets of wood and the parts that I need to cut out. That's what it looks like. I'm gonna put it on the screen now for you guys to see. So instead of us having to go into the house and have a look at it or having to look at it on the phone, I got the uh, Mac on the window facing out and uh, we just come by this window look inside like idiots, I bet to everyone else that can't see the Mac, they're like, why are they standing by the window and just look inside their own house? So at the moment we're trying to do some angled cuts, which I've never done before, and I'll show you what I mean. So I bought myself a new jigsaw, it's a Makita jigsaw, yep, and as you can see the plate is at a bit of an angle, it has a name, I forgot its name, the, uh, the shoe, the shoe is at an angle, so that our boards can have angled cuts. I'm having it fixed on this one, so I know that all my angles are the same. Time to cut. Things were going surprisingly well, despite our lack of experience with power tools, but as you can imagine, it's quite tiring work, so we decided to call it a day without finishing all the cuts. And it was a few days before we can set up again because of bad weather. What we're gonna do today is a few more cuts, then we need to treat the wood, seal it up, uh, because apparently MDF doesn't like moisture very much. We did find out that we should have bought moisture resistant MDF, which is like a special kind of MDF, and that would have been better. We didn't know. And this is one of probably many things that we did wrong with this project. We've got a bit of a problem, because we have to assemble all the pieces to see how much we need to cut off the top. And we can't do it because we don't have enough hands, so we're going to have to lay it on the ground and try to do it from a side view. Let me show you what we mean. This was definitely the hardest part of the project because we're trying to balance all the pieces of wood together that we've cut already to see if they fit properly, so then we can measure the remaining ones and make sure everything goes together correctly. So, I don't know if you can see, but the crate looks pretty small at the moment, so we're trying to figure out a way to give Bella a bit more space. We think we managed to work out the issues, made a few extra cuts, and hopefully now given Bella enough space in the crate. The so next up, it was time to make the door. I'm gonna show you something pretty cool. Well, it's cool to me, and I've never done it before. Uh, so this right here is a door uh, for the front of the crate. So you can see I've cut the outside, and now we want to cut the inside bit as well so we can put a mesh panel so we can see in and Bella can see out. Typically, the way you would do it is you drill a hole in one of the corners and then drill along and do the rest. But I was reading the manual for the uh, jigsaw and it says that you can do what's called a plunge cut. I didn't even know about it. Where you can actually start by drilling on one of the straights and then after that, you're good to go. Just do it as normal, but it means you don't have to make a hole. And I'll show you how I did it. So the idea with this is that you balance the jigsaw at the front, and then you slowly start lowering the blade into the wood. And that should give you a clean entry point, so you can then start cutting along. It actually worked quite well. I have no idea if I'm doing it right or not, but it definitely worked. boy we've only gone and done it look at that and it's basically gonna be a door that has a mesh panel here <laughs> one of the most satisfying things is cleaning your tool after you're done <laughs> if you know what I mean. Days later, we decided it was time to continue with the project. And what we had to do next was cover the exposed cuts of the wood with PVA glue, so the nice and sealed. 
and then used an acrylic primer on everything else to make sure it's ready to be painted. Am I doing it right? I don't think you're using the roller properly. Oh. Is that right? No. Priming and painting all those pieces of wood was taking forever and at this stage we didn't think we'd be able to put them together properly so we were kind of giving up but thankfully all the pieces were painted so all we had to do now was wait for the paint to dry. Well uh, we're back again uh, it's been a while and you might notice that we look slightly different now it's because it's been seven months since the last time we attempted the project and basically we're waiting for the paint to dry and uh, yeah it's dry now so let's crack on with the rest of the project what I'm gonna do now is I've got all the pieces out uh, the next step is to glue the pieces together and then nail them together so they hold I've no idea what I'm doing uh, but before we begin Safety first. I don't know if you can tell from what you're seeing here, but I was very excited to use this toy tool Tool. I was very excited to use this tool And things went better than expected we started by gluing the pieces together and then one by one we started putting a few nails in It's loaded it's live. I'm a bit stressed out, but hopefully it goes well. Do you need a hand? No, no, we're fine. <laughs> I fall. Well, it seems to be working. The nails weren't going all the way in, but I soon realized the tool had to be on the highest setting for it to go through the wood properly. So we carried on gluing and nailing pieces together, and soon enough we had something that resembled a dog crate, at least partially. So we made some progress with this project, and Bella is now testing it. You can see we've cut the sides, two side panels with little windows. Uh, it's being held on by clamps now, but Bella is doing a great job of demonstrating yeah. what we want this to look like. At this stage we were actually quite excited we could see the crate being put together and it actually looked like a dog crate and with Bella in there it looked great, it looked how we imagined it to look, obviously not as well put together but it looked like the design we originally had in mind. And here it is. I mean, look at it. It looks like a legitimate thing. We built it from scratch. We have no idea what we're doing, but this thing looks like an actual dog crate that you would have in your car. Like I've said before, it's a bit rough around the edges, metaphorically speaking, and very much literally speaking, but it works. It's got a door. Bella has room in there there's loads of light coming in from all the windows around the sides it's sturdy it doesn't feel like it's gonna break and generally i think it looks pretty good so the next question is how is it gonna fit in the car oh, <laughs> oh boy it's heavy <sighs> Ta -da! That's the new crate. It's a bit heavy, I'm not gonna lie, but look how much nicer it fits, right? It Does it look good? Does it? Does it look good? I don't know.
this was the first time we've actually tried it and uh, I was kind of scared that I was going to break the glass because it looks like it's sticking out the top a little bit but it actually works fine so there we go that's the new crate it's in the car it weighs a ton um, kind of pull my back a little bit trying to put it in so it fits the back seats so much better and it creates a lot more room I forgot to mention the other thing that we want to do so we wanted to elevate the platform a little bit so when Bella is in there she can actually look forward so she should be able to see us um, from uh, from the crate whereas um, the crate that we had before is right on the on the floor of the boot so she can see forward I'll tell you one of the cool things that we've done is we've added a little drawer here so we can uh, store a bunch of our things uh, one of which is the collapse portable shower which we take with us all the time it literally lives in the car uh, it came really handy yesterday we went to the beach and Bella got covered in sand uh, so we were able to wash all of that off and we're probably gonna carry like some towels tennis balls maybe a little collapsible water bowl yeah why not so that's going to be really handy and this is actually quite a big drawer so it should be able to fit most of the things that we need to carry with us oh boy don't worry about that we're going to cut that out from the video you're not going to be able to see it i might actually have to cut this out as well you haven't seen this okay you haven't seen anything i left the new touch Left well, didn't we just solve another problem? Yes, we did. Does it work? Hey, nice. So another problem solved. That's the point of this uh, video to attempt to fix a problem we were having with a with a crate, and it it kind of worked. It kind of worked. I've seen worse things than this. As I've been saying from the beginning of the video, this is not a DIY how-to kind of a video. As you can see, we haven't got a clue what we're doing, but maybe has inspired you to do something similar, even if you don't know what you're doing. Just be safe with the power tools and the nail guns and all that kind of stuff. For any of you guys that know how to do stuff like that, if you've done a similar project before, let us know what you've done differently. I don't know where we went wrong, but I can tell you we went wrong in many steps of the way. But I don't know if there was something we could have done differently that would have made our life a lot easier when we're building this crate. Do you have a similar issue with your cars, with the slopey back seats? Also, so if you have seen other crates that look like this maybe there's a crate out there that you can buy that actually fits all of the things that we wanted to the crate to have so that's it for this video thank you so much for watching uh, give it a thumbs up and uh, we'll see you on the next one catch you later so that can leave in there seagulls they have no respect for when you're filming a video Ma, go, 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 go. Okay. <laughs> she has to do a little side. <laughs>